Writing Two-Step Inequalities, Lesson 7.2. An inequality is a mathematical sentence that shows the relationship between quantities that aren't equivalent. They aren't equal. So you notice there's no equal sign. For a one-step inequality, we only have one step to solve it. For this one, 2x is less than 3. We just use an additive inverse for the 2 as a negative 2. We create a zero pair here, and we're left with x is less than 1. 3 minus 2 is 1. For this one, we have 2x is greater than 6. This is a one-step inequality. We're going to use division to solve. We multiply 2 times x, some number, and it's going to be greater than 6. So we can divide both sides by the coefficient 2. It's the inverse of multiplication. It's division. We get 1x is greater than 3. So that's a one-step uh, inequality. Here we have two examples of two-step inequalities. They need two steps to find the solution. Here we have 4x plus 5 is greater than or equal to 17. We can use an additive inverse. We can add a negative 5 to both sides of the inequality sign, create a zero pair here, and we're left with 4x is greater than or equal to 12. The second step would be, because this is multiplication, we'll use division, and divide both sides by this coefficient 4 to isolate x to one side of the inequality sign. When we do this, we get a 1x on the left, and here, 12 divided by 4 is 3, so we know x is greater than or equal to 3. For this one, we have 3y minus 6 is less than 9. Because we have a minus 6, we can do a plus 6 to create a zero pair here, and we get 3y is less than 15. We divide both sides by the coefficient 3, because that's multiplication when they're together like that. So we're going to use division as the inverse. We get 1y is less than 5. That's a two-step inequality. It took two steps to find the solution. The signs that are used in inequalities are a less than sign. You can remember that that's less than compared to greater than, because it kind of looks like a slanted L, doesn't it? L for less. So we have greater than. We have less than or equal to, so when the bar is underneath the less than sign, that means it could possibly be equal to it also. And this is greater than or equal to. So inequalities don't have equal signs. They have one of these signs. We can write two-step inequalities to represent real-world problems by translating the words of the problems into numbers, variables, and operations. The entrance fee to an amusement park is $5. Each ride is $2. So how many rides can a person go on if they have $16? So that's all they have is $16. We're going to let R represent the amount of the rides that we're trying to find. We need to identify the important information. Well, the entrance fee is $5. It told us that. Each ride is $2. It told us that. And they only have $16, so they can't spend more than $16. Now we can write our inequality. The price per ride is $2. And we're going to multiply that times, it's going to be times, the amount of rides. So R is going to represent the amount of rides. We need to add that $5 entrance fee that they had to pay. And whatever this amount is, 2r plus 5, it's going to be less than or equal to $16 because that's all the money they have. So we've got 2 times r, or 2r, plus 5 is less than or equal to 16. Step 1, we're going to use additive inverse to create a zero pair of plus 5 minus 5. We can eliminate this, create a zero pair. And what we're left with is 2r is less than or equal to 11. 16 minus 5 is 11. Because 2r is multiplication, the inverse would be division. So we're going to divide both sides by this coefficient 2 because we're trying to isolate r all by itself on this side of the inequality. That gives us 1r 
so we have r, is less than or equal to 11 halves, which simplifies to 5.5. Well, they can't go on half of a ride, so the most they can ride is 5. So that would be our answer. They can go on five rides. We'll have a little bit of money left over. But he can't go on six. He doesn't have enough. We used a less than or equal to sign because we couldn't go over $16. That's all the money he had. Lisa baked two batches of cookies plus 10 more cookies. We don't know how much is in a batch. All we know is that she made two batches. She made at least 50 cookies. So how many were in each batch? So there were two batches times some amount of cookies in each batch, plus the 10 more cookies she made. And that's going to be greater than or equal to 50, because she made at least 50. She may have made more. It says she made at least 50. That's the minimum she made. Maybe she made 52. So we use a greater than or equal to sign. And we do step one. We use an additive inverse to, to get rid of this plus 10. We add a negative 10 to each side. Of the, that creates a zero pair. And we're left with 2B is greater than or equal to 40. 50 minus 10 is 40. We divide both sides by the 2 coefficient here, because 2b is multiplication, division is the inverse, that's left with 1b is greater than or equal to 20. So we know there were at least 20 cookies in each batch. It was 20 or more in each batch. One pizza is $12 and a cake is $18. If Bob has $84, how many pizzas can he buy and still afford to buy a cake? So we're going to let P stand for the number of pizzas he can buy. They're $12 a piece. He has to spend $18 for the cake. And he only has $84. So we're going to use a less than or equal to sign because it has to be less than or equal to the money he has. It can't be greater than $84. That's all he has. The first step we're going to do is we're going to use additive inverse to create a zero pair here. We have a plus 18, so we're going to do a minus 18. We're going to add a negative 18 to each side of the inequality sign. That means this is zero now, and we have 12p is less than or equal to 66. Because 12p is multiplication, we use division as our inverse operation for our second step. That creates a 1p is less than or equal to 5.5. And he can't buy half a pizza, so he can buy at most five pizzas. Mountain climbers set up their camp at 18,460 feet. The climbing team wants to reach the summit of the mountain, 29,029 feet, within six days. We need to write an inequality to find the average number of feet per day. The team must climb to accomplish its goal of reaching the summit. So we think, what are we trying to find? That's going to be our variable. We're trying to find the number of feet per day. So we're going to let x be the number of feet they need to climb per day. They started at 18,460 feet. The goal is 29,029 feet. We have six days to get to the summit. That's the important information. Their start point is 18,460. We need to add it to the days multiplied by times the altitude gained. So that's the days they have to do it. This is where they're starting, and this is the amount they need to climb per day. And it's going to be greater than or equal to their goal. It'll be greater than or equal to their goal because it's the minimum amount they must climb per day to reach the summit in six days or less. So they could actually climb more. X could be greater. So they climb 
more and they get there quicker, couldn't they? So we've got 18,460 plus 6x is going to be greater than or equal to that summit at 20,029 feet. We created zero pair using additive inverse for this amount. We have a positive 18,460, so we add a negative 18,460 to both sides. This becomes a zero. Then we're left with 6x is greater than or equal to 1,569. Because this is multiplication, we use division for step two as our inverse operation that creates a 1x is greater than or equal to 261.5 feet. So they must climb at least 261.5 feet per day to make that summit within six days. They could climb more. They could climb 300 feet per day. And they would still make it within six days. They'd just get there a little bit earlier. But it won't go past the six. See? Now if we take a look at these three examples, you may have noticed that when this one said at least, we used a greater than or equal to sign. When this one said at least, because that was the minimum amount that they needed to climb, it was at least 261.5 feet. We used a greater than or equal to sign again. But for this one, it was how many he could buy at most. We used a less than or equal to sign. So we can write two-step inequalities from work problems by changing the words into numbers, variables, and operations. 2x plus 20 is less than or equal to 50. x is the solution to the problem. It's the variable we're looking for. 2x means, for some reason given, the quantity we're looking for, that variable, is multiplied by 2. Plus 20 means that 20 is added to the 2x. And the less than or equal to means that after multiplying the solution, x, by that amount 2 and adding 20 to it, the result can be no greater than 50. It must be equal to 50 or 50 at most. In the next lesson, we're going to talk about solving and graphing two-step inequalities on a number line. That's video 7.3. So check this description for links to the 7th grade math playlist and to helpful videos. Remember to read the word problems carefully and break it down word for word to figure out what we're looking for. Isolate the variable, assign it a letter, and Use two steps, additive inverses, to solve for that variable. And pay attention to which way your inequality sign is facing. Is it at least? Is it at most? Have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.